Welcome back everybody to another episode of all the mods 9 to the sky. How are you guys doing? And before we go on, take a look at this. Yes, the base is coming together. Yep, I've been building and I think it's looking quite nice, you know. This floor does not have well, basically anything really. Uh, but upstairs we got our brain, our massive A2 computer which is holding everything, you know, and it's, it has access to all the farms down here. I linked it up uh, through these cables that go underneath here and they're linking here and they're also linking here. And then you probably notice that, yeah, I have no power here, but I have power here. Uh, before uh, some consideration, I realized that these guys might actually be Super crazy, and you guys even confirmed me in the comments that the thermal generators are pretty, pretty good. And I upgrade them to Niotic, and I made 18 of them here. I had random ones still in my storage, but I want to upgrade these guys even further. But I also saw that the Magmators, like the Nitro version, produces 40,000. That's insane. It's like that's a lot, a lot of power. If I go up to the Niotic, it's two times, uh, or it's two K, and that's still higher than this one because this one is only producing one six eighty. Uh, so the two thousand is definitely more, but for now those are actually kind of easier to, to make. So they're there and they're producing a lot of power, uh, and also underneath here, I brought in closer wood and the wool. Uh, that, that we're making using EMC values with energy condensers. Uh, brought the KV here, and I also brought the uh, calcite, and I'm now making andesite. Because one of the things that I do want to do is create automations. Because we do need to make some create automations. But might as well just go around and check what I've what I done. I had a few automations here for the power stuff, just a couple. We have the inscriber room right here where we have four uh, inscribers to make these patterns right here. They all have them. And then we have one for silicon, one for diamond, one for gold and one for quartz. Uh, that room's empty. We got our brains. I made some more 256k crafting storages and we got, uh, we're up to eight of these crafting areas. Then we have our, uh, our storage, our, <laughs> our drives. And I made 12 of these ones, so we can even make even more. And then, of course, we have the the brain themselves. I, I, I guess this is more of the brain than this one. It's more like the work, <laughs> the, the hands that put the things together. And I, they also added these ones. I, I don't think I had these ones before. Extended molecular assembler. They come with eight different crafting uh, sections so they're super super powerful to make a bunch of items in one go and then we have some mechanism machines that have some automations like not a lot of them uh, some of them have some of them don't like for concrete because I wanted to use concrete to do some details around the base and stuff like that so we have a concrete automation as well and then I have like the smallest create automation you could possibly do with a water wheel and a millstone so you can grab our hands on some dyes and stuff like that. But there's a very cool feature that I have implemented in this space. And I don't know if you can notice it, but it's this thing right here. You see, I purpose purposefully left some gaps uh, between the ceiling and the walls so I could just come over here and access all my ME cables. I feel like this is a very cool feature that I added uh, just because it allows me to quickly check here without having a dedicated area to go up because we got jetpacks right might as well just use it just jump over here, go down here. We can even go across if you want to get to a room quickly and stuff like that. You can just go inside as well, but might as well just go up here and quickly jump across and boom, take a look at that. We're all the way here. That's that's crazy. I feel like this is a very good way to separate your cable management area from your machine management area. 
And yeah, just thought it was cool to show you guys. But with that said, what is the goal for today? Because we do have a base, but it's mostly empty, so we do need to do things in it. Now, I was thinking of upgrading our power, but as long as that one can hold that, we can, we can, we can wait on that. But we need to continue progressing to the quest lines. And one of the next quest lines is making a marine fisher. And I thought, well, this should be easy, right? But then I realized it needs plastic. And plastic, of course, needs the latex processing units. And the latex processing unit needs, well, latex, right? So we got to go and start farming latex with fluid uh, extractors. Or maybe we could even use the thermal ones. But I don't think we should. I think we should go with the industrial foregoing one. So we need the latex, right? So in order to get that, we need some fluid extractors looking at a piece of wood. And acacia is the best one. Now, we don't even give, need to power them in order for them to actually work, as you can see. But if we power them, they work a lot faster. Then all we really need to do is pipe out the, all the latex you're getting. Uh, I'm piping it into a tank and then into the latex processing unit. And then you need to put it in with some extra water and you're gonna start getting your dry rubber, which you then can cook into making yourself some plastic. I'm gonna go and do this same exact setup all the way over there. So we got a decent production of dry rubber. But before doing that, we do need to fix this right here. As you can see, this block uh, will eventually break and it needs to be replaced. How we're gonna replace it? Well, with a block placer, which, well, it needs plastic, so we kind of need to get this thing up and running first, so we can then make ourselves the block placer from ourselves. Just gonna go ahead and cook it, it's gonna go back into my computer, so we can just go ahead and craft it. Aha! So I was having issues with the placers, well, basically not placing, but uh, thankfully, there's a Discord for these things. All the mods is a very helpful Discord. Uh, people just help you if you have any issues. And they help me. And they're helping me like a lot of times. Uh, basically, uh, if the placer is not placing, it's because he, the fake players is turned off. So to fix this real quick, you go into the team. You create yourself a, a team with only you. Doesn't need to have anybody else. You can add other people. And you go to the settings and then you turn this thing to true so it allows all fake players which means that this block placer hopefully will now actually place things so if i break this and i put that there it should not place because it doesn't have power but now it should yep there we go it places Perfect, which means now this guy is working and I just made it like this. So I actually had an easier time uh, Seeing what's going on. So I have one less uh, with extractor, but shouldn't be that much of an issue and I really don't need these guys here as I can just pump it from the front So we can just wrench these things out of here. <laughs> it's way easier and it gives me a lot more space back here to put some importers importing acacia logs all the way into these machines so now we should have a decent uh, enough uh, power supply I've for some reason removed that from there there we go and i was trying to see if it wasn't uh, a range issue but no it was not a range issue it means boom we're done now, you might also notice that uh, after I link this up, I'm also using these. These are the Ender Gates from Power, And these are a very cool and neat way of actually powering my machines without always be using the cables. And I hope to use this a little bit more because I don't think I use these enough. And basically, you kind of need an Ender cell that has some sort of power attached to it, uh, like a, a limit. Power, I believe uh, but then we also need to power like one ender gate itself like this one is getting powered from this flux point and then it's sending out power to all of these like they know what to do innatively but you can also like configure them to know what they have to do like receive extracts and then it 
the other sides are off, but you can turn them on if you want to. If I have a single one of these output into multiple machines in like in videos and stuff like that. So yeah, that's actually a pretty cool way and very compact way because you don't have cables going all around to just power all of your machines. And now since this is all linked up to my system now, I should be getting a decent amount of uh, rubber. Rubber? Yeah, I got 61, 62 dry rubber and this one I can immediately turn into plastic. Actually, I might just wanna teach myself the recipe so whenever we need, we can just put it on there and then we just take it over here to our smelter right here and we add this one too. So basically, I need to rearrange these, but for now, this is what I'll be doing to automate some of the processes. So I got my hands on the marine fisher, yes. And I also automated some things over here. Now, I mainly automated the add-ons for speed, efficiency and processing, which is this one. And I also automated the machine, the machine frame. I don't know the name, but the, like the right name. It's a simple machine frame. Yeah, I automated this one here as well. So now we have these, this process automated. Uh, we still have four here for the dissolution chambers that can be automated for the advanced machine frame and the supreme machine frame. Uh, the problem with these ones is that they actually uh, require pink slime. And I do not and ether gas, which is another one. <laughs> I believe I need to farm this uh, on the wither's head to get that. So yeah, that would be fun. But right now, the only thing I wanted was the marine fisher, so we could progress through the quest line, and we just got it. Which is amazing. So now we can move on and actually, well, go and probably kill the wither, right? So I went ahead and actually dealt with the wither inside this cage. You know, if you know, you know, it's just make a tinted glass cage and the wither can't really do anything. You just sit back and you hit him. And then I went ahead and crafted myself an angel ring. This is using two nether stars. You get one from killing the wither and you get another one from a quest line. That's also by killing the wither and you get a diamond ring. We had a light where we explored the end. The cast tiers, thanks for, thankfully, our mob farm gave me some catalyzing land, so I was able to make the cast tiers. And we now have an angel ring. Now this is good because it doesn't use energy, and it's 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 literally creative flight. It's 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 just literally creative flight. Nothing else, nothing less. And it doesn't use power, but you know it's very very similar to how a jetpack would work. But it can just jump regularly like a normal Minecraft player would, and you don't have to deal with anything, and when you need to fly, you just double space. So, yeah, it's, it's it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better, I'd say. Which means the next the next quest is actually the Horde Lasers. Uh, and the Horde Laser Drills and the Horde Laser, which means a lot of these things need to be built. Now, I told my system how to make these machines already, but there's a little bit of an issue with the recipes. Now, take a look here. Take a look at the laser drill. And it's how task one. Well, there's not really any particular weird item here, right? There's, there's, there's not. There's all good. But if you take a look at the other one, the laser base, well, it asks for iron ore. And uh, that's where it can be tricky. Because I'm not storing any iron ore. Now, I do not know how many uh, ore lasers I'm gonna need. If take a look at the ores and how I can get them. Well, I can get them through a dimensional mineshaft. I can get them through there. But I'm also getting them from the chunks that I'm farming. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Uh, we can either just sit around and wait for our machines to collect the, the iron ore chunks. And then we just wait around for it i believe here for example yeah we just grab these two we can just wait around here and wait for a couple of these iron ores to be built and for us to just well yoink them out of out of the machines we can do that for example oh that's copper and there's none going into there so yeah you can see we just got two so if we just wait a little bit we should get a few extra ones in a second that's nickel that's zinc 
that's osmium so yeah we should just wait around get her a few i think i'm gonna try and get her get her stack at least that should keep us safe oh yeah and now could i forget i also made myself a time in the bottle because we now have access to netherite so as soon as you get netherite make yourself a time in the bottle because this could save you a long time and you can see i spent four hours already and that's because i have gate for like four hours so I came up with a little bit of a solution and that was to actually just put a drawer here that's now collecting us some iron ore and now all I really need to do is just grab this off of here we can put it at like really anywhere actually we might just put it here uh though that might cause some issues with it also, yeah, it might cause a little bit of an issue. So we're going to actually bring it all the way over to this side. I'm actually going to slap it here. Uh, it might cause an issue because if I had it there, any iron ore could just swile, slide, slide on down here and enter there. And I want iron. So basically, I'm just going to link this to this one. So now it's hooked up to our storage system. And then comes the second issue. And the second issue is, for example, if I ask... 10 of these, the, like the base ones, we of course, well, we need more sticks, so we need to teach our system the sticks, but we need the advanced machine frames. Uh, I think we taught our system how to make them. Advanced... No, we, we still haven't teached our system how to make these, because, we well, we're still lacking pink slime. Which means, uh, well, yeah, we need a mob slaughter factory, and this is easy on itself, but this means that we actually need another sort of mob farm. You know, I also keep dying of starvation when I am AFK, so if you guys have any tips for an easy food source, please let me know down below, because I will for sure make it. So, using my Silk Touch Axe, I'm now able to pick up this dreadful dirt using a rotten egg, and of course, if you don't know what a rotten egg is well you get a rotten egg by using some chicken feed curse and that gives you the dreadful dirt if you put it on a 5x5 five five area of dirt and this thing will spawn mobs so i'm gonna use this to do a little bit of a cage plus the mob slaughter factory so i can get my hands on some pink slime now i do think this also gives some other resource i don't really remember <laughs> Oh, there you go. Liquid meat. Now, liquid meat I can't use as a food thing. I'm... I, I think? I think I can use it as a food source somehow. I can wash some ores with liquid meat. I, I, I'm probably just going to store it. I think that's what I'm going to do. We can use the metallurgic and mycelial generator. Mycelial generators are also a pretty fun way of using and getting power, but I don't think I'm going to get into that. Now, I also just taught my system how to make some tanks, and I'm gonna go all the way up to the elite tanks, and I'm gonna make two of these, one for each of the resources. But I do realize that eventually I will have to automate the next tier of tank, which is the ultimate tank, and that requires an automation of the, of the alloys and all those things, so I do require myself a uh, reforming. A re re redoing of this room right here with a bunch more machinery so yeah guess that's gonna go for next episode though oh so here we go we're now getting ourselves some pink slime of course this could be a, like a lot a lot expanded but i think this is an easier setup but the mob slaughter looking into the area where you have the dreadful dirt i encompass it into the glass covering even my my gaps here so somehow mobs would not escape out of here of course, do never forget of your Ender Inhibitor, or else Enderman might just teleport away. And I gave it a, a range upgrade, as you can see, of 2, so it encompasses the entire area, and also gave it all the other add-ons that I had. And then I just piped the liquid meat into here, the pink slime into here, and of course, uh, whenever the, one of these is full, it's just gonna go into the trash can. Oh yes, and remember, this destroys any possible mob drop so you don't have to deal with any of that and so apparently this was just a tutorial and now we're gonna be moving into all the required items and i got a book now uh of the all the mods star and well if you take a look at this well that's a lot of different items right there 
uh but i think we're gonna manage right we're we're making good progress we have a good foundation that we can improve on now thinking of what we might want to do next we definitely need a better revamp of our mechanism stuff so we have a better uh process of automation and all those things because with a good resource automation of mechanism then you can easily move into anything else then we probably need some farms for inferium because of course we're gonna need insanium and all those things so we're gonna need a bunch of these things we also need to reach the last tier of the power mod we need to mess with bees we need to move into project e so you can see there's tons and tons of things to do i'm gonna collect everything we got nothing <laughs> i guess we got some forced ingots and a copper generator <laughs> we got nothing out of here but it's okay uh, we're definitely gonna have to move uh, into better power as well. So yes, plenty of things to do. So this episode is taking quite a long time to, to do because of all the base building and all the things. But hopefully you guys still enjoyed this video. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. And see you in the next one. Bye!